Hello guys and welcome again to Automation, the car company tycoon game which is right now uh, mostly an engine and uh, bodywork designer for cars. Um, there have there has been a lot of people who liked my last video about this game and I'm going to show some of my creations here. There's a sandbox more when you can basically get whatever you want. You are not restricted by these scenarios. Um, and of course we all do the same. When we get this kind of game, we all do exactly the same thing, which is building the biggest, meanest, most powerful thing you have, you can achieve. Well, I did, and I'm very proud of what I did, so I'm going to show you. So here we are, this is my engine. It's a um, flat, plane, a flat plane V8. Uh, I'm going to guide you through all this um, engine and uh, its parts. Uh, it's a 9.2 liter engine with a bore of 115.1 uh, millimeter and a stroke of 110.5 millimeters. Um, materials are as advanced as possible. Magnesium block material with the steel crankcase, uh, I-beam titanium for the gun rods and uh, for the pistons. Because, well, Believe me when I tell you, uh, this thing really needs very advanced materials because otherwise it blows up. Um, the top end is a uh, well, pretty much a standard for a high performance engine, a dual overhead cam uh, with four bars per, per piston, AISI uh, head material, a compression ratio of 10 to 1, a cam profile of, um, well, it's twin stages. I have a variable valve. Um, um, it's called variable valve lift. Um, basically, this means that the valves have two different uh, shapes and that they are stated at low RPMs and the lower uh, cam profile works, at high RPMs, the higher one works. Um, variable uh, valve timer in all cams, of course, high sport, um, high performance engine, you need that. Aspiration is do, done by a two, <laughs> twin turbo turbocharger uh, with ball bearings and uh, water, air, large intercooler. Uh, compressor, turbine, air uh, ratio, and max boost. Well, you can all check here. Max boost, actually, this is more cosmetic than any other thing because it doesn't go over 2.31 bars. I could limit this, <coughs> but there is no practical use on doing so, so I didn't. The fuel system. It's an injection, direct injection with thro uh, one throttle per, per cylinder. The intake, I chose performance. I'm going to go with race for a second. You're going to see why, and I'll go back and show you. A fuel type, well, on teammate, on leader, which is 100 octane fuel. Um, I need that because, of course, I want as much performance as I can. Fuel mixture is all the way to the top, and actually, <laughs> the engine doesn't complain. I mean, with Normal engines, as long as as soon as you start going over 12 to 1, the engine is complaining that it's running to reach. Well, this one is at top uh, reach and is not complaining. Initial timing advanced at 84 and RPM limiter at 6600. I can't go over this because otherwise the engine simply will blow up on me. Well, not really. Uh, I can push up maybe 300 more RPM, but um, well, the engine lifetime is severely restricted if you if you do that. So the exhaust is a Sorcast dual exhaust with no bypass valves, no need to. Uh, exhaust diameter is almost six inches because I really need that. I mean, guess which kind of power I'm doing with this engine just by looking at this. I mean, these are dual exhausts, okay? Uh, catalytic converter, a high flow, three-way. This is very useful because it restricts the creation of uh, NOx and helps with uh, lower octane ratings. Just one muffler from, for the, for the uh, exhausts because I'm not bothered with, with noise, to be honest. So let's test it. Let's go into test mode. This is the engine. Let's start this beauty. Uh, okay. If you're looking at the gauges, you can see that at idle, this engine is producing 600 newtons of torque. Yeah, well, just watch this. Throw it up. Oh, I'm getting knocked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. That's because I changed the performance, the intake. 
With race, uh, you get knocking, and um, but if you adjust the settings, you get much higher power. Well, much higher, maybe 30 extra horsepower. So let's go again because I don't want knocking, of course. And this engine is tuned for a standard performance. Now look at that. Look at those couches, where they are sitting at. Okay, we are reaching the practical limit of throttle. You can see the turbos are working at the top. You can see them here spinning. No, oh, sorry. They are spinning here. Both of them. The engine block is suffering quite a bit. Um, the connecting runs at the crankcase <laughs> doesn't like this kind of stuff a lot. That's what I mean. If I go, I can go slightly up on the on the revolutions per minute and extract maybe 50 more horsepower of this engine, but then it wouldn't last at all. So okay, you are seeing it working. Let's see the stats of the engine. At this mode and. Yeah, check this beauty and its numbers. Look at that torque. <laughs> and look at that power. <laughs> and this is with a performance intake. <laughs> if I go with the race one, this go over, goes over the top. The thing is, as you can see, I have a mean time between failures of uh, 16, more than 16,000 kilometers. If I increase the and I can do that, do that by maybe 300 RPM and repeat the testing you are going to see that I get higher power but at the cost of lower rel uh, mean time between failures well, maybe with 300 more I'll break the engine, we'll see no, it's, it's holding 200, uh, maybe it's 20 more uh, horsepower and I can keep it up I mean yeah I have won uh, maybe 10 horsepower I can extract maybe from the looks of it and uh, 300 rpm out of this but of course in the meantime between failures is going to hell so no I, I limited the the revs because I want the engine to last a little bit of course what what you are seeing here is absolutely not practical at all because with this torque uh, curve, as soon as you hit 3,800 RPM, look at that! Look at that! <laughs> well, the, the the wheels would spin like mad. I mean, I I should need a more a less steep torque curve, but this is an amazing engine. So this this is it. This this is my monster. We all do one. A monster, 9.2 liter, uh, 40 valve, um, twin turbo engine. Uh, let's go back to engine management and I'm going to show you another one. This one I created like, uh, as anyone who likes um, engines and, and cars, well, everyone really likes um, the uh, 60s and 70s American Muscle cars. Um, and I created an engine just for that. It's a, as you can see, 1969 gear, so that restricts me a lot in, in the materials I can use. It's a straight V8 with a 6 liter okay, capacity, uh, forced steel crankcase, I beam steel core rods, and four head pistons. Uh, dual overhead cam with five valves per cylinder. I can't use mm, BBL because it's too early. So with five, uh, you need four valves per cylinder to um, do a, um, a variable valve um, lift. Uh, but as they are not available because it's too early, I went with five valves per per cylinder. Cast icon, head material, no other um, way. Uh, compression is 11 to 1, cam profile is 60, uh, no BPT, no BPL, too early for that. Aspiration is naturally aspirated and no turbos yet. I'm using actually, I'm not using injection in this one, I'm using carburetor with 4 barrel, turn carburetor, performance intake, super fuel, 
uh, fuel mixture of 12.9 to 1, ignition timing to of 71, and RPM limit to uh, of 6,100. Exhaust is, uh, is through a long tubular design, dual exhaust, uh, no muffler bypass, exhaust diameter, no catalytic converter, again too, er again too early, uh, two mufflers of straight through nature. Let's see what does this thing do. I love how this engine sounds. I love how it sounds. Don't you? You can see at top revs, uh, the engine is reaching its limits. Um, I toyed around with the idea of reducing the the stroke and increasing the bore, but. I think it's it's cool when it sounds. Let's see its numbers. Let's see how it performs. Okay, let's go. A pretty nice <coughs> torque car. Picks up at 8,800 RPM. I think it's a little bit too high. I want it a little bit before, but still, <coughs> I think it's it, it works fine. I mean. The, it's not a very steep curve anyway. Uh, 510 horsepower, 650 newtons at 4,800 uh, RPM. Actually, I achieved to uh, set a red line of 6,100 RPM and achieved the top power at a lower road limit. So I really, I actually can go and reduce the RPM limit by one and uh, increase the mean time between failures a little bit. I think that uh, lowers the responsibility, and res uh, well, the answer of the engine to commands. So I don't know if that's worthwhile or not. You can see we are going to reach exactly the same power, but we are limited at 100 RPM less, which is still work f works fine, I think. You can see, yeah, the mean time between failures has increased. The responsiveness is a little bit lower, but not much. Uh, I'm going to leave it that way, to be honest. Yeah, I want to replace it. So yeah, those are my two mm, nice engines. I was doing some other job with more normal things, a 1.1 liter, very small engine uh, for small cars, a 1.9 liter um, with 150 horsepower for, well, bigger cars, sedans and normal street cars with uh, decent um, fuel economy and stuff because as you can see well this thing is a fuel gasler <laughs> economy is like well an economy <laughs> then I did a um, two liter well actually two versions of the same um, engine with slightly different dimensions and both are of there are two rotated and those are for the kind of sport car which is the street sport car a lot of people use and yeah uh, and those are uh, I'm doing like for uh, as if I was doing an engine for a real life car because in the end this uh, this game is all going to be all about car design and if you all you do is this kind of beasts you are going to reach nowhere. Uh, so well this is what I have been doing in Automation. This is such a fun game. Um, also if you are interested in World War Two planes, it's actually a very uh, nice one to learn. I mean. 95% of the of today's car engine technology has its roots in in World War II because in World War II piston engine planes uh, were the norm, were the most common, and they really had to improve in engine quality, powers, uh, etc., materials, uh, turbochargers, superchargers. So. Most of the today's technology is an evolution of what was there in World War II, and to understand how World War II engines um, work it in a way because of course you can't put these engines at 10,000 km, 10,000 meters of altitude. But to understand how engine works, the engines work, this thing is a very useful tool, and that way you will understand why some engines were designed the way they were, how they were developed, and developed, and why why and which were the reasons for that development. Um, by the way, I just noticed it and someone told me um, that soon uh, this game is going to have engines up to V18. <laughs> yeah, that's right, 18 cylinders. 
Oh, that's going to be fun. Uh, so, well, guys, hope you enjoy. Hope you have fun. Hope you like my designs. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And see you later.